Have you ever, at the age 16, moved to a completely new country and even adapted to that new environment? Well, that's exactly what Kit, the main character, did. Hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I have this awesome book to review to you guys. The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear and has won the Newbery Medal with an intro introduction by Newbery Medalist Karen Cusman. Well, let's get right on to it. Kit is 16 years old and has lived in Barbados Islands for, well, basically all of her life, being loved and pampered by her grandfather who was very rich and owned many plantations full of slaves. And he, the grandfather, was very rich. And he would pamper cat Kit with clothes, and she was taught to read and swim in the warm waters of Barbados. Thing takes a, things take a dramatic turn, though. Grandfather's heart, I mean, mental health, began to decline, and the health declined mentally, both mentally and physically. And he died. And he let a pile of debts, well, pile up. And Kit had to sell everything that her grandfather had owned to pay off all the debts. Now, Kit could have stayed, stayed in Barbados, couldn't she? But a 50-year-old man tried to marry her. So she got to run for it, which was why that kid moved to her uncle and aunt's house at America, in America. And this was before America was even a country, by the way. And on the, on the way to America, she met Nate and Prudence. Prudence is a little girl. And she drops her doll into the water. Our dear main character Kit, on impulse, jumps in the water and saves the doll for the little girl. But the girl's mother says that no respectable woman would ever float on water like that, and that she was a witch. Of course it was ridiculous, I mean, there's no such thing as witches. But that's what Prudence's mother thought. And that's what many people thought at that time, when America wasn't even a country and was a colony. And she became a little bit of a frenemy with our dear Nat. And she, he, she also became well acquainted with the boy, with a man named John, who was going, also going to the same destination as her to study under a great teacher. Anyway, then she arrives, and she's shocked to find the landscape gray and forbidding. And there's no paved roads and great expensive shops. There was just square houses, small square houses, and dirt roads with cow pad on it. I mean, what? She was totally not prepared for this. And she finds out that well, she was pampered, right? She has slaves and servants and everything. But now, she had to do all of that, those things on her own. And she had to help with the physical labor of her uncle's house. And she didn't quite fit in with the huge, strict Puritan things. Because she had to go to mass two times a week on the same day, no, no, no less. And she thought that it was quite boring. And it was a pain to sit there, and it is very annoying. And even a little bit of frog licking around got her into trouble, and she barely could even smile. Then she was told to teach people because she, apparently she could read, and she was she read a lot of plays and she read a lot of books, which is why she could teach a little kid. And she thought that teaching kids by reading the Bible is kind of boring. So she told those kids to act it out. Act the Bible out. 
And well, it was perfect, it was fun. But it got a bit out of control, and that's when the principal came. He said that it was real bad, and Kit got into real big trouble for that. And that's why, our my dear friends, Kit was crying that day in the middle. And that's where she met Hannah Tupper. Hannah Tupper was excused being a witch, but she was just an elderly old woman who was nice and had uh, one cat and had blueberry cake to people who was crying their hearts out in her meadow. I mean, why would she be a witch? And, well, our dear Kit found out that our dear Tupper, our dear Hannah, was a very nice person and that she was to be trusted. And she finds out that Nat too had found out that Hannah was a very good person due to an experience when she, back when she, he was quite a bit younger, when she had been hurt and crying in the meadow and Hannah had fed him a blueberry cake and even presented him with a kitten. And then the bad things start to happen. You see, Prudence was absolutely worshipping to Kit after she had rescued the little doll that Prudence, early at the boat, had dropped into the water. And that's why our dear Prudence was very worshipping to our dear Kit. And that's why Prudence agreed to take lessons at a meadow under a willow tree for writing and reading. And she was smart as a whip and adapted really well. Then she, they started learning in the hut that our dear witch, by witch I mean Han Tupper, lived in, lived in. And at first she was afraid, after all everyone said that Hannah Tupper was a witch. And she went in and she was fed blueberry cake and she was allowed to touch the cat. And well, what? Why does everybody say she's a witch? I mean, she's super nice. At least that's what our dear Prudence finds out, which is the truth. And her mother is a sociopathic person who always accuses of everyone becoming a witch. I mean, come on, what the flip? I mean, why is if someone does a little something a little bit out of line and she's a witch or she's bewitched or like that's like four-year-old saying that you're a poopy head. I mean, no one takes that seriously these days. But in those days, that was a serious crime. And witches were tried and hanged and put her put to the water test, which is a ridiculous test, by the way. Anyone who could swim could get out of that. And yeah, that's what kind of dark days that kid was living in. And then a disease swept through the town, and the town pe townspeople, the mob, a mob, said that it was Hannah Tupper who had done it. She had bewitched the entire little town. So, they had gone to burn Hannah Tupper's home, and Kit only managed to rescue her in time, just in time, barely. And thankfully, Nathaniel Ship was passing by, and Nathaniel, who loved Hannah too, got Hannah into the boat, and Hannah was whisked away to Nathaniel's grandmother's house, where she was given good company. And then, but Kit was accused of being a witch by our dear Prudence's mother. I mean, come on, as I said, no one actually takes seriously that she's a witch. Let's try her and put her in water and see if she can swim. Like... What? That makes absolutely no sense, in my opinion. Anyway. So, Kit was tried as a witch, and at her trial, she was just about to become accused and hanged for being a witch. But Prudence and Nat came, and Prudence gave her evidence. You see, our dear Kit had teach Prudence to write. And she had given her a little notebook, a beautiful little notebook, and there she had written, she had made Prudence write her name all over again. And then, fearing that Prudence might get into trouble, she said that she had written those Prudence's name over and over again. And that meant that she had cursed Prudence, or something like that. I mean, come on. So, she was accused and she was tried and she was about to be announced guilty. 
And then Prudence came, and she declared that she had written that, and she proved it by reading the Bible correctly. And then her, uh, and then Prudence, and, and then Prudence's mother, she was about to accuse Prudence of being bewitched, but Prudence, Prudence, I mean Prudence's father, who had always wanted her, his daughter to read, had been, realized that he had been tricked by his wife, who had said that he, that Prudence was a half wit. And she, he found out that her, his daughter, was smart as a whip. And that's why she removed all tries from our dear Kit. And Nat was given amnesty for his little prank that he pulled. And the 30 lashes that he was supposed to get if he got inside the town. And he was given amnesty because he had risked his neck to bring justice. And the book ends with three marriages. Mercy, the nice little cousin's marriage, and and the other cousin's marriage. And finally, I mean Judith, you know, the other cousin, who was a bit annoying, but had found her true love. And finally, our dear kid had met with the proposal from Nat, who, had, who they, ha, they had not realized been falling into love for quite a while. And the book ends with, with Nat's proposal and them about to ask the aunt. Uncle, to see if they could actually be engaged, and it's a great book, and it makes you think. Could you, when you're sixteen, move to a completely new country like a parrot moving to cold Antarctica with cold city with only pigeons and sparrows? Could you have done that? I highly doubt it. Great book makes you think. What would you have done? And like always, your book quester and the book quester.